Here's the latest news from the Caucasus neighborhood. Riot police and tear gas have been used against protesters yet again in Istanbul this week, but it seems the citizens have had enough. What started as a group occupying Taksim Gezi Park to prevent it from being turned into a shopping mall evolved into a mass anti-government demonstration that is making international headlines. Protesters say the park is Istanbul's last public green space and should be preserved. Trees in the park were being cut down and protesters tried to block bulldozers, but were removed from the park by police using tear gas and water cannons. Other protests in recent weeks targeted Prime Minister Erdogan's policy in Syria and a new law banning the sale of alcohol at night. The Gezi Park development plan has the full support of the Prime Minister. The heavy-handed attempt to put down the park protest with tear gas and violence cost the Prime Minister a great deal of support. Soon numerous disparate groups with various grievances against the government also took to the streets. Protests spread to Ankara and numerous other cities, with over a thousand people arrested and many injured. Currently, riot police have withdrawn from Taksim Square, which is still occupied by protesters. It bears mentioning that the Gezi Park has an Armenian connection, as it is on land confiscated from the Armenian community in the 1940s, and part of it was built over an Armenian cemetery. Anger over the Turkish Prime Minister's support for the Syrian rebels emanates from the town of Rihanli on the Syrian border. The Los Angeles Times reports that the town's residents are still in a state of shock two weeks after twin car bombings there killed 51 people and injured hundreds more. With the Syrian civil war just across the border, residents in southern Turkey feel they have been dragged into it. The car bombings have been linked to Turks with ties to a Syrian group which supports President Bashar al-Assad and the attack is widely seen as blowback for Ankara's support of the rebels against Assad. There are currently 300,000 refugees from Syria in Turkey's southern border regions, and with no solution to the conflict in sight, many are unsure how the situation will unfold. The BBC also reported on the plight of dissidents in Ilham Aliyev's Azerbaijan, where dozens of journalists, opposition activists, and bloggers have been arrested in the last two years. According to human rights groups, the arrests are based on trumped-up charges intended to crush the potential for an Arab Spring-style uprising in the run-up to presidential elections in October. New regulations fine participants in anti-government demonstrations in the center of Baku more than most Azerbaijanis earn in a year, and a tough new libel law recently passed by parliament could criminalize such activities online as well. Investigative reporter Khadija Ismailova, who was a victim of blackmail for her work exposing high-level Azerbaijani officials, accused the government of playing the nationalist card to distract from problems like corruption. As regards Armenians, she said that the right thing now would be to embrace Armenian citizens in Azerbaijan, but that would end the conflict, and the government doesn't want that. That's the latest news from the Caucasus neighborhood.